Hi guys, welcome back to a case of econ struggles. Today I'm going to talk about environmental economics. Specifically, I'm going to talk about optimal pollution taxes using both emissions and concentrations with transfer coefficients. Per usual, timestamps are below if you would like to jump around, but let's go ahead and start talking about pollution taxes. So if you remember from the last video, environmental economics, when I talked about why command and control doesn't work, if you haven't seen it, that video is going to pop up in the top right corner. But basically what I talked about is that when you have firms with different cost structures, it doesn't make sense for them to abate the same amount for each firm. So that's why command and control doesn't work. So we know that. Well, how can we get these firms to emit different levels using some sort of economic instrument? And so that's what taxes are gonna do. And that's what I'm gonna talk about. And so first, what we know is that if we take where the MAC equals the MDF in the world and we take that straight across, we know we find wherever that hits the MAC of each firm, that's the level of emissions we want. So this right here is going to be our E star A, and then this over here is going to be our E star B. And so the reason this came up is because we talked about how command and control doesn't make sense with firms at different costs, because we don't want firm A and firm B to emit the same amount. We want to allow them to emit different amounts because it's cheaper for firm A to abate or to reduce their emissions than it is for firm B. Okay, so that's basically what we did in the last video. But again, we didn't talk about how we can get this to happen using economic policy and this is where taxes are gonna come in. So let's just take a second and let's talk about firm B. Let's just talk about firm B specifically. So here's firm B and I've drawn the world graph sort of small up and to the left just so we have it with us because it's gonna play an important role here in a second. And basically what we know is that what the firms are doing is they're setting marginal private benefit equal to marginal private cost of emitting and that's what firms wanna do just because they're profit maximizing they set marginal private cost equal to marginal private benefit that happens to be at full emissions, and we get to this market level EM. We know for firm B, we wanna to get to E star like we just talked about. So the question is, how can we do that? Well, this is a typical externality problem. And if we go back to the world graph, what you're gonna see is that we have marginal private benefit, marginal private cost, marginal social cost. So the difference between marginal private cost and marginal social cost, is gonna be this difference right here between the red line or the marginal damage function and the origin because firms have no private cost of emitting. So this guy right here, this is our marginal external cost or the difference between the marginal social cost and the marginal private cost. Now you'll notice as we move along the level of emissions on this world graph, the marginal external cost is changing. And so if you look somewhere like right here, that's where the marginal external cost is greatest. And so that's where we have full emissions. So ultimately what we wanna do is we want these firms to internalize or feel the marginal external cost that the pollution is causing. But in this graph, marginal external cost is not constant. It's changing over or it's changing based on the level of emissions. And so when we choose a tax, we can't just use the marginal external cost because the question becomes, well, which marginal external cost? Which level of emissions are you using to measure the marginal external cost to generate that tax and affect firm behavior? And so what we're gonna say, if I know that I want firm B to be at E star and I know that their marginal private cost is zero, then really what I wanna do is I wanna change that marginal private cost by this distance here because I wanna take the marginal private cost from zero to this MAC star line. That's where I wanna take marginal private cost. So this difference, this is the marginal external cost that I care about. And so in order to make the firms internalize that, I'm just gonna set that equal to tau star or the tax because I need marginal private benefit to be equal to marginal private cost at E star. And by adding a tax T star, I'm going to shift marginal private cost from zero up to this green line, which is sort of extending out here. And so when I do that, and the firm does marginal private benefit equal marginal private cost, they're gonna say, okay, well, this is my marginal private benefit in blue. So it comes like this. And if this is my marginal private cost now with the tax, then the firm is gonna settle right here, which is exactly where I want them at E star. And I will have achieved the optimal level of emissions and abatement for firm B. So just to reiterate that on this three graph system, what we've done is we've said, well, the tax is the marginal external cost at E star. The external cost on this world graph is the difference between where the MDF and the MAC meet and zero because that's the marginal private cost of emissions. So this difference here, this is the marginal external cost. And so this is the level of tax or tau star that we wanna have. So we set tax equal to tau star. So now marginal private cost for both firms is going to be this green line. So this is marginal private cost plus tau and tau is equal to our MAC star. 
So each firm is going to take their marginal private benefit, which is their MAC line. So this is the marginal private benefit for firm A. This is the marginal private benefit for firm B. So when they set marginal private cost equal to marginal private benefit, now that marginal private cost has this tax added into it, what we're gonna see, firm A is gonna settle right here. Firm B is gonna settle right here. That's where their marginal private benefit is equal to the tax or their new marginal private cost. And we get the exact E star that we wanted everything's good and now we can figure out exactly how many emissions we have we can think about total abatement cost because we're able to calculate these emissions with the tax level so all we said is we said that the macs have to be equal to each other so this is where maca equals macb is equal to mac star mac star is coming from the marginal damage function equals the marginal abatement cost and then what we're doing is that's also going to be equal to our tax level so if there are questions, if there are comments, please feel free to put that in the comment section below. So now I'm gonna talk about transfer coefficients and taxes, and here's the basic idea behind transfer coefficients. So instead of measuring pollution at the source at these different firms, we're now measuring at this AQMS, or this air quality measuring station, that's sort of situated in between a bunch of different polluters or a bunch of different firms. Now firm A, Basically, all the smoke from firm A is hitting the sensor. So for every emissions that person A puts out, it's changing the concentration at the sensor by one. So this is like a one-to-one -one correlation between emissions and concentration. So for a one-to-one, -one, we would say that alpha, this transfer coefficient, is equal to one because 100% of the emissions or of the pollution from firm A is reaching the station. For firm B, you can see based on where they're situated, there's a bunch of wind happening. And so one sort of cloud of smoke gets pushed off away from the sensor, but the other 75% of smoke or pollution that comes out of firm B stack is hitting the sensor. So basically what's happening, three out of every four sort of clouds of pollution are reaching the sensor. And so that alpha or their transfer coefficient is gonna be 0.75. Now this is not exactly how this works, sort of approximately how this works, but if you have this picture in your head, I think it's gonna really help you understand what's happening. So for firm C, Maybe firm C, they've also got four clouds of smoke, but based on their winds, based on where they're situated, only about half of their pollution is reaching the air quality sensor. And so basically they sort of have a two to four ratio or two out of every four clouds are reaching the sensor. And so we would say that their transfer coefficient is just 0.5 because about half of their pollution is reaching the sensor. Okay, really fundamentally, this is about concentrations in the air of these different pollutants. And so if you take higher level environmental economics classes, they're gonna refine this picture and make it a little more scientific. But just at a basic level, I think this is gonna help you understand what transfer coefficients are and what we're trying to measure when we talk about transfer coefficients. So now let's think about this in terms of a table just to do something different than a graph. So we said that firm A has a transfer coefficient of one, firm B has a transfer coefficient of three out of four, and firm C has a transfer coefficient of one half. And so we're gonna say that all three firms have the same cost structure in terms of abating their emissions. So maybe A, this is just tons. So one ton, two ton, three tons, four tons, and five tons. Remember this is abatement, not emissions. Again, just to be a little different. And so what's gonna happen is if that firm A has a one-to-one -one relationship between concentration and emissions, then the amount of concentration they reduce is gonna be the same as their emissions. So if they abate one ton, they abate one concentration, two, three, four, and five. So their MAC for concentration or their cost to reduce concentration at the sensor by one unit, it's just gonna be the same as their marginal abatement cost for emissions. So this is gonna be two, four, six, eight, and 10. Now, if we go to firm B, firm B has a transfer coefficient of three fourths. So what that's gonna mean is if firm B decides to reduce their emissions by one, they're not gonna reduce the concentration by one, they're only gonna reduce the concentration by 0.75. So then if we keep going, if they abate their emissions by two, and it's three fourths, this is gonna become 1.5, this is gonna become 2.25, this is gonna become three, this is gonna become 3.75. For firm C, if it's only a half, if they reduce their emissions by one, they only reduce the concentration by a half, and that just keeps going like that. So if this is not making sense, feel free to leave a comment below. But again, all we've done so far is to say, based on this transfer coefficient, for every emission that I reduce, how does that affect the concentration at the air quality monitoring station? And that just depends on my transfer coefficient. 
and that's we're basically just multiplying the amount of abatement by the transfer coefficient. Now when it comes to marginal abatement cost, the marginal abatement cost is the cost for this firm to reduce the concentration by one. So for example, for firm B, we know that for firm B, reducing their emissions by one reduces the concentration by only 0.75. So if they want to reduce by a whole unit and not 0.75 units, then really their marginal abatement cost for a unit of concentration needs to be greater than their marginal abatement cost for a unit of emission, which is two. So what you can do is you could basically take this two, you divide it by three fourths, which is the same as multiplying it by four thirds, and you're gonna get 2.67. Again, what you can do to check yourself is to say, well, my transfer coefficient is less than one, then my marginal abatement cost being two means that if I want to reduce a unit of concentration rather than emissions, well, I need to reduce my emissions by more than one to reduce the concentration by one. And so my marginal abatement cost for concentration needs to be higher than my marginal abatement cost for emissions. So if we keep going, basically what we're doing, just taking this MAC, we're dividing it by the transfer coefficient. So we're gonna get 2.67, 5.3, 8, 10.66, and 13.33. Again, if that's confusing, feel free to leave a comment or sort of rewind this video a couple of seconds and see if it makes more sense. Now when we have alpha equals a half, I think this is going to be even easier to see because when we abate one unit of emissions, we know that we abate only half a unit of concentration. So if we want to abate one unit of concentration, we need to reduce our emissions by two to reduce the concentration by one. And so we can take this marginal abatement cost, we're going to double it, and we're going to get to four. And that's going to be the same sort of deal all the way through. And so we have this guy right here. Okay, so now we've just completed the table. And now let's think about some other questions that we could be asked based on the table. So for example, suppose you calculate that that star is 7.25 and you need to figure out how many emissions each firm is going to reduce by and how many concentrations each firm is going to abate. Okay, well we know that at the optimal we're going to set these MACs equal to each other. We're dealing with concentrations and so we need to think about when the MACs of concentrations are going to be equal to each other. So right away, there's not really a great way to do this. I think it's easiest just to sort of look at the table and find some common numbers. So for example, I see that for firm A, the marginal abatement cost is eight right here. You all circle that in green. So here's an eight, here's an eight, and here's an eight. And is it true that if we do this, the concentration gets reduced by 7.25? Well, here the concentration gets reduced by four. So here's a four. Then I have a 2.25 right here. So that's 6.25. And then I have a one right here. Lo and behold, that's 7.25. Sort of using the MACs being equal and the fact that if my professor is giving me a problem or if I'm giving someone a problem, I'm trying to make it nice where you don't have to do a bunch of math. So it makes sense that this is gonna be the answer. And so we know right away that firm A is going to reduce their concentration by four. Firm B is reducing their concentration by 2.25. And firm C is reducing their concentration by one. Now in terms of emissions, well, that means that firm A is going to reduce their emissions by four. Notice that firm B, their MAC is six. The number of emissions they're reducing is three. And firm C, the number of emissions they're reducing is going to be two because that corresponds to that row here. And so again, this is concentration. This is going to be four abatement from firm A, three abatement from firm B, two abatement from firm C. And that's gonna give us a grand total of nine units of emissions abated in order to get the 7.25 abatement in concentration. So now let's think about the total abatement cost to get there. And so a total abatement cost here is gonna be based on emissions. Now remember for total abatement costs, we're basically just gonna add up the marginal abatement cost in order to get there. So for firm A, if they're gonna abate four units, then what that means is they pay $2 to abate the first unit plus $4 for the second unit plus $6 for the third unit, plus $8 for the fourth unit. So their total abatement cost, which I'm just gonna put right in here. So their total abatement cost is going to be six, 12, and 20. For firm B, if they're gonna abate three units, they're gonna pay two for the first unit, four for the second unit, and six for the second unit. So this is for A. Firm B is going to wind up paying 12. Firm C is going to pay $2 for the first unit and $4 for the second unit. So they're going to pay six for C, which is going to give you a total of 38 for the total abatement cost. So again, hopefully that makes sense. If there are questions about how I got that, feel free to put that in the comments below. 
Now the last question is the optimal tax rate for each firm. And so remember that when you do a tax, what each firm is gonna do is they're gonna say, okay, for each unit of abatement, I have two options. Okay, my first option is I can pay the tax and I can not abate. My second option is I pay the abatement cost. And so by abating that unit of emissions, I don't have to pay the tax. And so for firm A, if we want them to abate four units, then we want them for units one, two, three, and four, we want them to say, hey, I would rather abate. I don't wanna pay the tax. It's cheaper for me to abate. And so what we're gonna say is that the optimal tax rate for firm one or firm A is gonna be $8. So maybe I'll put that right here. So tau star, this is gonna be a tau. Tau star for A should be equal to $8. Along the same lines for firm B, if we want them to abate that third unit and we know their marginal abatement cost for unit three is six, we need to set their tax rate equal to $6 so that for units one, two, and three, they say, well, it's cheaper or as cheap for me to abate that unit of pollution as it would be for me to pay the tax. So my T star for firm B is gonna be exactly six. Along the same lines, T star for C, you already know where this is going. For firm C, we want the first two units, we want them to abate rather than pay the tax. If we want them to abate rather than pay the tax, their abatement cost has to be cheaper or just as cheap as the tax. So we set the tax rate exactly equal to four and firm C is going to reduce their emissions or abate by two units. Okay, so as you're doing this question, one thing to check yourself is to say, okay, well, who is it cheaper for? Well, if I look at firm A, firm B, and firm C, so if we look at this, we can see that for firm A, it's generally cheaper for them to abate than everyone else. Firm B is sort of in the middle, and firm C, it's most expensive. So as I'm doing this question, as I'm trying to figure out the abatements for each firm, I can say, well, when I get my answer, I should get that firm A abates more than firm B, and firm B abates more than firm C, just because of their relative abatement costs. And so if I can use that to help check my answer, then by the time I'm done, I can say, yes, this makes sense, and I can explain why it makes sense, or if I get something that's wrong, I can realize it, I can go back through, I can think about what's happening, and maybe correct my answer. So again, this is just sort of a video on taxes and transfer coefficients. If this video or these videos in general are helping you out, please like and subscribe. We'll see you next time for another case of Econ Struggles.